All right, and so this section is sort of bad and clean up. It was lumped with the um, cholinesterase inhibitors and other paralytic agents, which I included in the autonomic section because they're sort of traditionally mentioned in that sense. These are a few of the other drugs that were mentioned in that lecture. I have two slides and I have a few facts that I've pretty much taken directly from the information that was included in your lecture. I don't really see these. I would know a few facts about these next few drugs, but I wouldn't worry too much. You have all of antibiotics, all of the autonomic nervous system, and all of these other things that you have to know, and then a dermatologic agent as well. Uh, this, this is, this is, these two slides are the last two slides you should study, and for good reason, because they're agents that are adjunct that are used in different things that we're, we're going to talk about in more detail later. I don't know why they were introduced here. Um, so we start with diazepam. Diazepam is a benzodiazepine. Works on a. See, I have to like go in into explaining what a diazep benzodiazepine is. We're going to talk about it later. Don't worry too much about these. So uh, the benzodiazepine is a specific receptor that is a uh, chloride channel. You want to know that by uh, a benzodiazepine, when it activates the benzodiazepine receptor, it increases the frequency of the channel opening. It's mostly used for sedation and memory loss effects, but it can be used for muscle relaxation, and it's very, very bad at that. It's historically been used for muscle relaxant, but it doesn't really do a good job as opposed to some of other agents. Side effects, as I just said, it can be used for sedation and respiratory. It can be used for sedation, and you know, so it will cause sedation. And then, as we'll get into in the future lectures, it can cause respiratory depression. Baclofen another muscle relaxant. This one, it's a GABA mimic. It doesn't necessarily, uh, it, it sort of acts like the neurotransmitter GABA and through this effect can cause some um, muscle relaxant effect. Wouldn't worry too much about its mechanism right now. We'll explain that in the lecture down the line. What I would know is baclofen in your mind, MS spasticity. Baclofen MS spasticity. That's what it's used for. Those are the patient population that you'll see it used in. It can cause drowsiness, not as much as diazepam, but it is a little tolerant, and there's an apparent withdrawal syndrome that can occur if you take the drug away too quickly without titrating it. That can lead to fever and altered mental status and rebound spasticity. Tizanidine. This is an alpha-2 agonist. We talked about a few before. Clonidine and alpha-methyl dopa. This is another one that uh, can be used and it can reduce muscle spasms. It can cause drowsiness, hypertension, dizziness, and dry mouth, a couple anticholinergic side effects. We have gabapentin and pregabalin. These are both anti-epileptic drugs. They have some spasmolytic activity. That's all I would know. I would know name recognition for most of these and uh, maybe for diazepam and baclofen, knowing a little bit about, you know, baclofen's use in MS and dia diazepam's effect on the chloride channel. Don't expect much to be asked on any of these drugs here. And then we have Botox, who I talked about before. And finally, there were a few other drugs. She talked about cyclobenzaprine, carisprodol, metalloxone, methylcarbamol, the parent drug is cyclobenzaprine. So again, it's uh, it's structurally similar to tricyclic antidepressant. We'll talk about those drugs later. It's primarily used for muscle spasm and the side effects. They can be very anticholinergic and sedative. So you have to be careful when you give it to a patient who's already on other sedatives. Actually, I believe uh, it's either, I think it's curisoprodol. It can be mixed with, um, I think, Xanax and uh, Oxycontin, Oxycodone, uh, an opioid. And, you know, it's known to potentiate the effects. And so a lot of drug users are, will try to get their hands on uh, this specific uh, carisprodol with Xanax and other drugs and mix them together because it can potentiate effects. So it has a, has drug interactions with other uh, sedative agents. Lastly, 
big drug interaction with tricyclic antidepressants because their model, these drugs are all structurally similar to tricyclics. Uh, one of the things that the tricyclic antidepressants do is lead to uh, QT prolongation, which is that uh, uh, ventricular repolarization, and it can elongate that. And if we have too many drugs that are elongating your ventricular repolarization, you can possibly go into torsades. So that's a big uh, interaction to know. Again, didn't really put too much information down for these last two slides. I really wouldn't worry too much about these two. I'd study these two slides last. I'd save the last few nerve cells for, um, for these two slides.